always have to be wary um, about China. China has money, it has political unity, and it has the will to carry out what it believes is the right thing. It, has, it doesn't have um, troublesome oppositions trying to stop them spending the money or anything. They have a, a, a unique view from their country. They have the money and the intent to put it where they where they think it should go. An MP's report has revealed the extent of Chinese spying in the UK, as well as trying to infiltrate British intelligence agencies. The Intelligence and Security Committee says Beijing's activities are so extensive that it has penetrated every sector of the economy. Times Radio's John Pienaar spoke to a member of that committee, Kevin Jones, on Times Radio yesterday about the different ways China exerts its influence. Defined list of industries which uh, should be looked at in terms of security first in terms of uh, foreign investment from China. We don't seem to have that and what we've really gone for really is putting the uh, security, sorry, the prosperity needs above uh, what our securities. They take technology uh, and in academia they do it two ways. There's obviously the influence in terms of getting involved in basic research uh, and extracting that information and IP, uh, and also in terms of uh, the influence it can have in terms of the political agenda on the campuses and uh, other political forums in the UK. William, d- did you find any surprises in the report? Were you surprised at the extent of Chinese infiltration? Um, I'm not surprised. Um, I think it is, it's an important report, and it particularly highlights that the real coordination is needed across all parts of government. You were just hearing there about universities. Um, that there can be problems with this in, in education. So that is really important. I think it's a bit out of date, though, in some ways. And I just said it because most of the evidence that the committee heard was in, um, I think, 2019 or 2020. Um, and since then, of course, the government has required removal of Huawei uh, from sensitive networks, passed the National Security and Investment Act, and they've used the powers under it eight times already to block Chinese purchases and uh, investments in companies. Uh, there's a new uh, Tom Tugendhat is a new security minister, and he largely made his reputation for uh, advocating a hard line on on China and the Foreign Affairs Committee. So I think things have moved on a lot actually since parts of this report were drafted. Well, but Joan- it is a they have to keep on moving. All right, I'll come back to you on that, William. But Joan, can I just put that to you that, you know, actually the government has has sharpened up its response. So, um, you know, there's nothing so much to worry about. Well, I'm 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 not party to the government's um, uh, private uh, steps that it's taking, but it seems to me you always have to be wary um, about China. China has money, it has political unity, and it has the will to carry out what it believes is the right thing. It it doesn't have um, troublesome oppositions trying to stop them spending the money or anything. They have a a unique view from their country. They have the money and the intent to put it where they they think it should go. So we should always be wary. Do you think we need to be warier? Do you think we've, you know, when you think about David Cameron's China strategy, you know, that wasn't really, the the, the Labour opposition at the time didn't really sort of dissent from that. Do you think we need to get a lot more robust? I I think you can be, you can trade, you can send people to universities. Um, There are quite a lot of Chinese come to Birkbeck, which I'm the president. You you welcome them, you make friends with them, um, but you remain wary, equipped to spot anything that is out of order and to respond to it. So there's there's action on a broad front, both Mm. generous, friendly and wary at the same time. Well, um, William, back to you on this, because, of course, Liz Truss, Rishi Sunak's predecessor, um, wanted him to be much more robust um, and see and designate China as a far bigger threat than he has. Do you think he's treading that path Um, successfully or does he need to go a bit further in kind of seeing China as much more hostile than than we do at the moment? Well, I think he is treading it successfully, but the path has changed. You know, the trajectory of China has changed in the last six years or so uh, since Xi Jinping came into power. So it has changed. And Joan is quite right that there's still many good things, good relations one can have with parts of the Chinese system. We can welcome large numbers of Chinese students to this country. 
there's still a lot of trade that we have with China in both directions. So uh, much of that is good. So we do always have to retain that perspective. But um, yeah, it it does it has required a much harder line in the last couple of years. And I, I listed earlier some of the things that have been done. I think that's that's proportionate and correct. But now, in the light of this report, there'll have to be, I think, some further efforts to make sure across the whole of government is an absolutely coordinated position. Right. And and looking at, you know, is there too much Chinese investment in uh, parts of, in utilities, uh, for instance? Mm -hmm. And uh, what is the role in all the universities? So there is more to do. Okay. Well